Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you here this morning. I am the Reverend Allison Cornell, and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Sierra Vista and our Sunday worship. A few announcements before we begin our worship this morning. Uh, I'm glad to be back. I have been uh, gone for about the last month uh, to attend to my father in South Carolina, and uh, he is now on hospice, and we needed to move him to a skilled nursing facility while I was there, as he is having trouble uh, walking and not falling, and uh, also getting enough to eat and taking his medications on time. So for now, that is where he is and uh, you'll hear about this a little bit later. We don't really know how much actual time he has left. So at some point in the future, I know I'm going to need to take another little leave of absence to go back out there uh, when he passes. So I appreciate your prayers for my sister and I and my father. His desire, his wish is that he falls asleep here and wakes up in heaven. Uh, so we're all praying for the same thing, that he won't have a prolonged illness and uh, we'll go peacefully in his sleep. Uh, as you know by now that we are in phase two where we can have 25-ish, it's basically 25% of our uh, legal capacity in the church, and that means somewhere between 25 and 30 people can be uh, live here in the church. Still need to wear your masks and still stay socially distant and sanitize uh, for our own safety and for the safety of others around us. So. Uh, if you would like to be here in person, you can certainly uh, come. We have about 13 here this morning, so we could have almost twice again as many people here, uh, provided that we remain socially distant and wear our masks. Our stewardship campaign is about to begin, and uh, we've got Pat and Nancy and Liz that have been working on putting together the stewardship campaign letter. And normally we would have a big kickoff, and then we do the campaign, then we have a big congratulations at the end of it, Unfortunately, we can't do that this year. Uh, so look for perhaps a, uh, a short video that we might do uh, when we kick off our campaign in November. And uh, look for a letter that will be coming to you in your regular mail. Um, the annual diocesan convention will also be online this year for the same reasons. And it will start on Thursday night with a worship service. And then the business of the church will be conducted on uh, Friday and Saturday, and we'll conclude that sometime in the early afternoon on Saturday. Those of us who are clergy and wardens um, and delegates for our church, during those daytime pieces, we're going to meet over in the education building. And if anyone's curious about what goes on at annual convention, granted this is not your typical annual convention, uh, are more than happy to stop in and we'll put it up on the big screen and you can just kind of see the business of the church uh, for the diocese uh, and all of the churches within. Um, otherwise, we'll hopefully get back to a more normal convention next year. So we'll wait and see on that. Um, on the 31st, which is Halloween, in the early part of the day at 11 in the morning till about two in the afternoon, we're going to do another paint party for our parish hall. We're trying to get it painted and uh, it's taken several uh, several different times to do it. Uh, and if you're interested and you've got the, the wherewithal and some grubby clothes you can throw on, come in and grab a paintbrush or a roller and help us to get the parish hall painted so it matches our new kitchen. Uh, do that on the 31st, 11 a.m. A quick reminder for those of you who are at home, you may sing to your heart's content whenever we have our music part of our worship, but those of us who are gathered here in person, uh, we do remind you to please uh, sing silently. Um, you're not allowed to sing out loud in order to keep the germs from spreading and getting anyone sick while we're here. And uh, a, quite, a last little uh, remark on our bulletins. Uh, our bulletins, while we're here in person, are not meant to be recycled. Normally we used to do that to save our paper and so forth, but again, because you've touched it, we don't want to pass on any germs. So either take it with you or put it in a trash receptacle when you're done with the service so that we don't have any chance of spreading any germs. Um, the other announcement that I have is a pastoral care announcement. Uh, Wendy was in touch with Rosemary this morning and mentioned that uh, Ralph had come through his surgery. He had fallen and, and broken a femur and apparently he's come through the surgery okay but now he's going to have to have some rehab and Rosemary herself has a few health issues that she's working with. 
Um, so please, they ask, uh, put both Ralph and Rosemary on your prayer lists and offer up prayers for their health and their well-being. Uh, so please do that. And if you have the time, maybe you know, reach out to Rosemary, give her a phone call, check in with her, and, uh, and see if there's anything that we as a church can do to help her out. All right. Are there other announcements? Yes, Cheryl. Um, as part of this phase, we are also um, allowed to have our choir sing. But of course, even we will be 20 feet away from each other and uh, you as well, the congregation as well. If you would like to sing with us, please um, let Mike know. Uh, come at 10 o'clock in the morning. You'll get a, uh, you'll, you'll need to have a singer's mask. This is a singer's mask. I'm not trying to be a duck this morning. Um, and it allows you to be able to breathe in deeply and um, also uh, collect some of what might be spraying out while you're singing but we would still need to be 20 feet away even from each other so if you would like to do that please join us thank you Cheryl so anyone interested in joining the choir please see our music director Mike any other announcements this morning yes Sandy Art in the parking lot for the Huachuca Art Association. The gallery and studios on Paseo San Luis. Paseo San Luis is going to be in their parking lot there? Okay. Yeah, Art in the Park is a tradition that we've done for many years here in Sierra Vista. And so in lieu of that, the 24th and the 31st, both on Saturday from 9 till 4, over at the Huachuca Art Association, if you're interested in uh, perusing their art and maybe winning a, uh, a prize uh, of some collected artworks, it sounds like. Uh, they're going to have vendors, too. So and vendors. You can buy if you like to post this somewhere. Uh, yeah, but if you give it to... One of us put it on the back table, we'll post it. Any other announcements this morning before we begin our worship? All right then. If you'll turn in your bulletins to page two and our gathering hymn, How Lovely Is Thy Dwelling Place, we who are here will enjoy it silently, and those of you at home may certainly sing along.
are able, and our service continues on page three in our bulletins. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be his kingdom, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Saying together the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Lord heavenly King, King, Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the collect for today together. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. Our first lesson this morning is a reading from the book of Isaiah. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made a city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was still. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained and clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Our psalm today is Psalm 23. We will all recite this in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be long. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff may comfort me. You spread the table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head to the water, and my heart is running over. 
Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second blessing is a reading from the book of Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Doya, and I urge him to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord our Christ. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. As part of my clergy training, um, Everyone who is in line for ordination needs to do something called clinical pastoral education, CPE. Clinical pastoral education takes place usually in a hospital setting or a hospice, and uh, it requires the students to spend time with those who are sick or injured or dying. Uh, and it lasts about three months, about 400 clinical hours of being with people. Um, in those, uh, in those places, a hospital or a hospice. And most of the mainline denominations require at least one unit, three months, 400 hours, from those that are to be ordained. So Episcopalians and Lutherans and Methodists and Presbyterians, the mainline denominations. Uh, at one point, I was feeling rather called to be a chaplain in a hospital setting, so I didn't stop at just one unit. I've had nine units. And in nine units, I've had a lot of time to be with people, to minister with people who are injured or uh, sick or dying. 
And for those who are dying, as our psalm, the 23rd psalm today says, when they are walking in the valley of the shadow of death, there are kind of two types of people. There are those that are unknowing, unconscious, or uh, perhaps sedated and are not aware of their condition. And there are those who are conscious and aware that their days are short, perhaps hours, perhaps days, perhaps weeks, perhaps months, but they have had a diagnosis and they understand that their time is short as they are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And the next line in our psalm says, uh, and I will fear no evil. Well, those who realize that their time is short do sometimes fear some evil. It's not usually the evil that's outside of themselves. It's not necessarily a, a fear of something happening to them from outside. It's usually an internal evil that they fear. The things done and left undone or said and left unsaid. They spend some time, as they get close to the end, doing what we call a life review. They go back over their lives to their earliest memories and kind of work their way forward in time and think about all those places where they've been, all the things that they've done, the people that are part of their lives. And sometimes that raises up issues, unfinished business, something that needs to be mended or fixed or uh, a relationship that, that needs some reconciliation. And often when people have these thoughts, these uh, desires to, to put things to right before they pass on, um, they need a little help. And I have been at the bedside of those who needed someone to make a phone call for them, to get in touch with somebody, to help them get in touch with somebody so that they could apologize or accept a forgiveness or make some other effort to put things to right before they pass on. Now, like I say, I've been at the bedside for many people, but on a more personal basis, this has also been true of my mom and my dad. About three years ago, in July of 2017, my mom got a diagnosis of terminal lung cancer, and uh, they told her she had one to three months to go, and she made it two, two months before she passed. And in those two months that she had, she did that life review, she did that introspection, and one of the places where she felt it was necessary to try and make amends was with my father. Now, my parents had been divorced since I was like 11, so a very long time. And the initial pain of the divorce had faded, and they had come to a place of peace for my sister and I. But my mom now, facing her last days when she was going to leave the earth and go on to a divine appointment with God to meet her maker, to see God face to face, felt that she wanted to put things in proper order. So she called my dad, and in their conversation, she apologized for the wrongs that she felt she had done as part of their marriage and asked for my dad's forgiveness. After the call, my dad relayed this to my sister and said, your mom called and, and you know, asked for forgiveness for the things that had gone wrong in their marriage. And my dad said, she's trying to get right with the Lord before she dies, and my sister kind of balked at that, and I assured her, I said, that's exactly what mom's doing. I said, it happens quite often for those that are knowingly aware that the end is near, and life kind of brings these things up, and you need to deal with them. And that's what my mom did. Well, here we are three years later, and now my dad finds himself in that place of walking in the valley of the shadow of death. And I believe he is also experiencing a little bit of fear of that internal evil of things done and left undone or said and left unsaid. Since January, I was there in January, I was there in June, and then just recently, in all of my visits with my dad, he has taken uh, pains to apologize for what he thinks are the failings that he had as a father in raising my sister and I. And most of those he attributes to um, not having spent enough time with us, that he was more dedicated to his work than perhaps to his family. And I think this comes about as he's done his life review and he's gone back in time to when he was a little boy and he has shared with me many of his happy memories of when he was a boy or a young man. 
uh, time spent with grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins and summer trips and, and all of those memories that are so meaningful for him. And then when he kind of comes forward in time to when he became a father and looks for those same types of memories as a father with his children, he finds them to be lacking, missing, unfulfilled. And so he has asked for forgiveness for having spent so much time dedicated to his work. He worked hard, he worked long, and he did not have a lot of involvement and did not make those kinds of memories with my sister and I or with my sister's kids, his grandkids. And so he finds himself in that place of fearing what he has done or left undone more often than not and is concerned about that and so he is apologizing and again trying to clear his conscience before his last days. Now there's another difference between my mom and my dad concerning their faith life. My mom has always been someone who has enjoyed being a part of a church family, a church community. Everywhere where she's gone she has sought out a church where she felt comfortable and she's come in and begun to attend regular worship and to hear the lessons and the message and sing the songs and, uh, and have fellowship with the members and participate in the ministries of the church. And she has felt that that has buoyed her, that has lifted her up. And I think it's gave, it gave her a kind of a confidence in a God who is loving and caring and gracious and forgiving. And so when it come, came to her last days, when she knew her time was growing shorter each day, each minute, her idea of what she was going to when she left here was the banquet in Isaiah from our readings today, where there was going to be a multitude of people and there was going to be rich foods and fine wines and there was going to be joy and happiness and every tear wiped away. That was the banquet that my mom was going to, and so she was kind of eager and excited because she had that confidence that I think came from being involved in a church community and of having her faith strengthened by everything that you get from a church community. My father, on the other hand, I think after he got to be a young adult and was no longer forced to go to church with parents and grandparents and so forth, he never really had any strong connections to a church or a church community. All the places where we've lived, as my sister and I were little girls growing up, we occasionally, sporadically, went to a Presbyterian church. But it was not a regular worship attendance. It was not a regular reading of or hearing scripture, of hearing the message, of singing the songs. It was not a regular interaction with other believers in fellowship or participation in church ministry. And so I think for my dad in his private personal faith, he has perhaps had less opportunity to be buoyed in his faith. And perhaps he is in that place of the banquet in our gospel lesson, where he was too busy. One went to his farm, another to his business. And now I think he worries that come the banquet time, he might be the one that shows up without the wedding robe and maybe is going to be cast out into the darkness. Denied that joy, that fellowship, that, that good food and, and fine wine. And so I think he approaches his last days with more trepidation, whereas my mom approached her last days with kind of a joyful, eager expectation of what was to come. And my mom, my dad, others that I've been at the bedside with in those last days, in those last hours. They waited until the end to try and make amends, to apologize for the things that they felt they had done wrong, the mistakes made, the bad choices, things done and left undone and said and left unsaid. What if we didn't wait to the last day, the last minutes, the last weeks? What if we tried to make amends now? If you know of somebody that you have an issue with, if there's someone that you're concerned that there's things said or left unsaid or done or left undone, and you'd like to put things to right now and clear your conscience now, 
then maybe we can get to a place like in the 23rd Psalm where it says, he will lead me to green pastures and beside the still waters and revive my soul. Don't wait. Don't let it go until the last day. Try and get to that point now so that you can unburden yourself a little bit and live in that joyous expectation where at the end of our song there it says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The Nicene Creed. Page 7, where you're bolted, or on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Say this together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God is not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was the same man. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and the four of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son. With the Father and Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and the church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jennifer, our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Providence of Uganda. May God bless us and keep them. The Diocese cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Peter's and Litchfield Park. May God bless us and keep them. We also pray pray for the first peoples of this land, especially the Apache and the Pashwoya Yakui, who call this area of Arizona their home. May God bless and keep them. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For Ralph and Rosemary. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place. Let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray
pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No one has done. Things done and left undone. And so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of man, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We are now going to be moving into the communion part of our service. Uh, you will note that there are marks down the center aisle when it is time for you to come forward. We ask that you stay spaced accordingly. When you come forward, if you'll stand at the first mark, and I will stand here, and uh, I will uh, then give you the bread, and if you'll move over, there's an X on either side. So if you're on this side, if you'll move to that X, you'll move your mask, eat your bread, put your mask back on, and then return to your seat. We're going to do this side of the church first. And we're going to do this side of the church, same thing, come forward, and then you go to that X, eat your bread, and then return back to your seat. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ is died Christ is risen Christ will come again we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, 
the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done now, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us the peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. service we like to recognize those that are having birthdays anniversaries who would like to request special healing prayers or who would like to share with us a gratitude a place where you've seen God at work in your life this past week uh, a blessing or an answer to a prayer so we'll start with birthdays anybody birthday this week no oh yes Wendy the 16th for you all right so we're going to do the
the birthday prayer, I'll say it if you hold your right hands in blessing towards Wendy. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as she in begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And happy birthday to you. Anniversaries. Healing prayers for uh, Ralph and Rosemary for sure. Anybody else? Yes? My mom asked for healing prayers. And for your mom? Remind me of mom's name? Uh, May. May? So May and Ralph and Rosemary. Okay. Yes? Who? Felicia and Phyllis. Felicia and Phyllis as well. Okay. So we're going to lift up a number of people for healing prayer. If you'll raise your right hands in blessing again. O oh God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of the suffering, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power, that sickness and distress may be turned into health and sorrow into joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then gratitudes. Does anybody have something they'd like to share as a blessing or uh, answer to prayer this week? Well, I will go. Oh, yes, Sandy. So Phyllis is in her new home in Texas? Priscilla is now in her uh, new home in Texas? Crawley, Texas. Okay. Well, safe travels for her. Thanks be to God for that. My gratitude is similar. Um, I'm grateful to have basically gone out and come back between hurricanes. Didn't get hit by either one of those. And I'm also very grateful that when my father did fall, that I happened to be there. Because otherwise it could have been hours and hours and hours before somebody found him on the ground. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that. So I share that with you all. Um, so thank you so much for that. Oh, yes, Don? Look at the safe travel. Maybe on the 16th, or we've had on the 15th, heading off to the party. Yes, going up for a week, 10 days-ish to check things out in Oregon. All right, well, safe travels definitely for you. And uh, we'll see you when you get back. And uh, hope everything goes well on your trip as well. All right, well, thank you, everyone. If you'll now turn to our post-communion prayer, and please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace which surpasses all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. 